Hi, I'm Anne of All Trades, and today I'm going to show you how to make a simple hook knife for carving spoons and doing other three-dimensional wood carving. This is a pretty rudimentary project. It's actually part two in my series. If you haven't already seen my do-it-yourself forge video, check that out. I have a link for it below. So let's get into the process of how to make this knife. We start off with a little piece of drill rod. This is going to be adequate tool steel to make your knife. It heat treats nicely. It's just a great bang for your buck. So you take this, you heat it up in the forge, and you make a flat. And then you're going to take this flat and you're going to grind it. And this is, that's the first process that I'm showing in the video, is the grinding of the basic shape. You'll see also that I'm putting it into a little wooden holder. And that's simply because with such a short little thing, you don't want to be doing this and trying to keep a consistent angle, especially if you're a beginner. So instead, what we did is we just made a little wooden jig, put this in it, and then change the grinder angle or the belt sender angle to the angle at which we wanted the blade to be ground. So the coolest thing about making your own knives is that you can experiment a whole lot. You ex can experiment with different shapes. You can experiment having the bevel on the top or the bevel on the bottom. You can experiment with how your hook and how your hook hooks. You can also experiment with blade angles and so just like with handle woodworking where you, there's a huge debate about what the effective what's the most effective effective cutting angle the same is true for spoon knives however with the final thickness of these blades it's probably most likely that you're going to get the best results from a around a 20 degree effective cutting angle and so that means that if you're going to have a single bevel then it's ground at 20 degrees so it'll be thicker back here and then at 20 degrees at the point or if you wanted to do a double bevel it would be ground at 10 degrees on the top and 10 degrees on the bottom or any combination of that maybe 15 and 5 whatever have at it feel free it'll be a good time then you see me stick the piece in the forge and heat it up till it's red hot. And I mean, you wanna be really careful not to overheat your steel, like leave it in there until it's bright yellow, but you also want it to be bright orange. You don't wanna to try to be doing, um, you don't wanna to try to be bending metal when it's like a dark red or, or black, certainly. So um, you'll see on that table there, there's a few different devices, just some pieces of scrap wood, and you can usually just use those scrap pieces of wood to heat it up and visualize or like eyeball the, the hook that you want. But if you want a really specifically even curve, you can use any manner of round object. Tom Henshide, my favorite spoon carving instructor who taught me how to do all this stuff, actually brilliantly welded together a whole bunch of mechanics tools so that you could have different sizes of an even radius to bend your knife over. Once you get your knife to be the shape that you like, it's time to quench it. I quenched it in peanut oil, and basically the only trick there is you wanna heat your knife up to a red hot temperature and dip it directly into the oil. Submerge the whole thing very quickly because if you just go really, really slow, you're going to A, catch your oil on fire, and that can be absolutely terrifying. Don't know from personal experience. But also because if you're really slow or if you put one edge or another in first, then that's going to cool that edge and it's actually gonna warp the metal. Now, at this point in the video, it's time for me to make sure that you know that I'm not a blacksmithing, metallurgy, or blade tempering expert by any stretch of the imagination. I've made a handful of knives and I've had a handful of successful tool making endeavors with chisels and draw knives and axes, but I am by no means an expert and this is just something that's done for fun. You're making things out of cheap scraps of steel in a $100 forging setup, so you will probably have some total hits and some total misses. And it's also important that I mention now that I also forgot to take some pretty crucial footage uh, during this knife making process because after you've quenched the steel, the next step is to test the hardness. And once you've got the hardness that you like, you need to heat it up again to soften the steel so that it becomes workable. The next step after quenching is to take it over to the buffer to clean off the edges so that you can see what you're working with. You need a nice shiny edge. 
And again, I forgot to get this footage, but it's honestly probably for the best because if you're actually going to be forging and tempering your own blades, please do some research of your own because once again, not an expert. So anyway, you heat your metal up as you're tempering it to a basic peacock or straw color. And then, that, and then at that point, you let it cool and then you wanna put it into an oven so that you can heat treat. And that heat treat is basically going to slowly bring it up to about 400 degrees and cook it for about an hour and then slowly come back down and you've got a blade that is hardened and then it's time to take your knife down to its final dimension. I'm talking about taking it to the, through the process of sharpening it. And that whole process is basically start using a whatever implement you have this is a dowel i mean i actually have a whole set of dowels that have different grits glued onto them so i don't have to keep rewrapping them but i couldn't find those for this video so all the better i'm using one dowel i'm using a various grit sandpaper pack the link for that will be below and basically i start at about 400 grit and I very patiently get my way through the grits, 400, 600, 800, 1,000, 1,200, as high as you wanna go. And then I move to stropping. This is just another dowel that's charged with, um, that's charged with abrasive chalk. And I use that to do the final. And then I have a leather pad that I'm doing the last final passes on the back of the blade. If you want more details on sharpening these hook knives, then check out my video on hook knife sharpening linked below. So the last thing that you need to do once you've finished is to put a handle on it. This is a really awesome wood handle, but if you're gonna be using a whole bunch of these um, blades, it's a lot of work to make individual handles for every single blade that you have. So it's nice to have one of these um, I mean, I think these originally came out as turning tools, um, but I'll see if I can find a link for them and include that below. Um, but this is actually really awesome because you can just interchange all your blades into this one handy dandy system. This, however, if you want to make your own handle is really easily easy. It's a square block that I chucked up in the lathe, turned it round, drilled a hole in the middle, glued the tang in and put this awesome copper ferrule, which is a piece of copper pipe that I found in our yard and now it's all shiny and nice. And so now you know how to make your own forge, you know how to make your own knife. Check out my how to make your own spoon video linked below. And I hope this video was helpful in getting your own start into the crazy awesome slippery slope of blade making and tool making. And stay tuned for some more awesome content next week.